No, no, uh, with light in your eyes, you feel like a deer caught in the headlights. So, but uh, thank you, Sanjeev, for the introduction. I'm uh, rather tongue-tied, so you'll not find my slides have too much text. Uh, uh, and it's more of uh, leaving some questions uh, in the room, especially the, uh, the youngsters. I mean, we're doing all of this really to leave the world a better place for the next generation. So it's more to just seed some thoughts in their heads. Uh, as far as clean energy goes, uh, it's good business. In 2004, the world investment in clean energy was 60 billion. In 2015, it was 330 billion. So it's certainly good for companies like Bechtel, and at Bechtel we straddle complexity and sustainability. So some of the snapshots that you see are big complex projects uh, in the clean energy space. Uh, if you look at the top left, uh, that's uh, Ivan Pai, it's Mojave Desert, California. So there are, uh, this is a solar thermal done with the bright source technology. And uh, it's, it's three towers, uh, each tower can generate 140 megawatts. Uh, there are 177,000 heliostats that turn through the day to put all the energy into your solar receiver steam generator at the top and then we generate power by driving a turbine from it. It is one of the logistically most nightmarish jobs we've done. But it's, it's, uh, I mean, if you ever take a flight from Los Angeles flying in, you can actually see them. Uh, th there's some unintended consequences the first few times uh, till the birds got around it. So we had a few unintended roasted birds uh, scattered around the site, but it evened out. They figured out they have to just stay away. Uh, the one just below that is a Heidel job in Canada, uh, Manitoba. It's a 200,000 cusack capacity of water that it's twice the size of Niagara Falls. Uh, that's we're harnessing to generate Heidel power. The one just below that is one of a series of combined cycle, very high efficiency, zero liquid discharge, combined cycle uh, power projects we built for Panda Power. Uh, Hummel, which is the latest, uh, it's about 1,100 megawatts. It replaces an existing coal facility. So it's in the same space. We are generating thrice the amount of energy and the water is about less than 3% of what the original facility used. Uh, bottom middle is Curtis Island. These are three customers for whom we built six LNG trains. Uh, again, a, a huge, huge challenge. Uh, the amount of steel on that island on those three projects, it's 13 times the steel you have in the Eiffel Tower. It's just managing that and delivering on or before time was really the challenge. Uh, these, this, these three projects will supply 8% of the world's LNG demand of 250 million tons. The bottom right is just an example of where Bechtel Worldwide, uh, through the Engineers Without Borders platform, helps communities equip themselves for natural disasters. So it's about community resilience. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, the abbreviation is uh, uh, natural disasters, uh, EWND. Uh, so it's events and natural disasters where we are helping communities brace themselves uh, so that if something works uh, against they, they can recover. The top right is a solar PV farm. There are two of these we built in California, 140 megawatts and 250 megawatts. Uh, the challenge again was the speed with which we could do it and get uh, the project delivered on time. Now as we go forward, uh, we are focusing on what you see in the middle panel as the SDG 2030. For those of you who may not quite know, sustainable development goals replaced millennial development goals. So there's a vision by 2030 that there's a total of aggregate of 17 goals that countries are coming together to support. Uh, within Bechtel, we have a working group and I'm one of the six advisors on the working group on energy and infrastructure. And we wish to make a difference by contributing 100 ideas between now and 2030 that the world can go out and implement. There are various elements to it, uh, energy, infra, water, all, all aspects of it. And for us to reach there, big data analytics is a must. Uh, we had a speaker talk about data enabled decision making. And we really cannot run away from the real world with just theoretical simulations. It has to be data enabled. 
And a lot of the IoT and smart device or sensor-driven technologies that are out there, they're trying to harness this space, and we will be part of that. So that's just kind of putting our credentials in the, uh, of Bechtel in the clean energy space. Uh, my take on uh, renewable is for renewable to be sustainable is something different from just being renewable. What we want to protect at the end of the day is the sphere in the middle. It, it looks nice and green, uh, the earth in this view, and it should stay that way. But let's look at how we typically get into the renewable space. So for both uh, solar and wind, uh, we, we first capture the energy, trap the energy in some form, so that's nice and renewable and limitless, that's nice. We then get and convert it to electricity. And if you look at the building blocks within those, the machines, the turbines, the panels, all of them require today a lot of the rare earth metals which are already getting stressed. Uh, for those of you who know chemistry or who have seen Breaking Bad, you can figure out which those elements are, uh, indium, lanthanum, neodymium, gallium, tellurium. Uh, so is it sustainable is the question. We then get into the distribution space and to just ease out the flywheel of variation in these generations, we need storage. And as Dr. Garg and Mr. Razdan in the previous session, they were making comments on, well, we will have these, but then at the end of the cycle, what do we do with the batteries? So who's, who's thinking of the sustainable part of that chain so that the whole chain becomes really sustainable? We then get into the smart grid and the smart meters and the end users. Uh, so one of the things about renewable is uh, you always know a space is nice if there's a lot of buzzwords. And smart energy is really that. Because anything that you touch today is supposed to be smart. Right? You're mobile, you're whatever you're doing. Uh, not using smart seems to imply that you're stupid. But the thing is, uh, are we really clear about what smart means? Uh, in a way, it's somebody, some blogger just wrote that, you know, smart is cool. So that's probably the biggest pull that you know, you do, you, you're doing something which is cool and which is in. But it has to be beyond that because you can go through this whole chain and make sure the smart devices, the smart metering, that they enable the generation side of it, so you have a, a minimum wastage. But what about the consumers in the end? The cluster that you see there of buildings and factories and uh, uh, residences and transportation, 20 gigatons of carbon dioxide efficiency resides in that last group. So I, I like what Tanya said, and I'm sure something that Radhika will cover, that why don't we decentralize it? Why do we have to have all these steps in between to get energy to the end consumer. Uh, let them, if they can, and especially at stranded locations, let them be self-sufficient. So the, the whole thing just goes off and reduces stress on, renew on, on sustainability. If you look at buildings, uh, if you look at economies, the more developed economies, you will see that uh, in cities, uh, by the way, cities account for 70% of energy-related emissions today. And this is IRENA's research. IRENA is not a person, it's International Renewable Energy Agency. They have an excellent report that they came out with last year. So those of you interested, just Google and read that up. So it's a database of 3,700 cities and it demonstrates the different segments where things can be done better and they can be done better if we are building things ground up. So in the policy making space or the design space or the investment space, if we build infrastructure that automatically consumes less energy, you have solved part of the problem. Today, that is not quite the case because different stakeholders are at play when infrastructure projects or infrastructure gets built. As economies advance, buildings take a very high proportion of the energy for heating and cooling. For cities that are less developed, more of the energy is in the industries and factories. So they have some little dials by, the, by which they show that different parts of the world have different solutions to truly embrace sustainable renewable energy. End of the day, 
this in equation that we have today, that it's renewable and sustainable are roughly equal, can actually get to the equation at the bottom. It is the innovation and in R&D that has to drive us there. It is smart in our energy technology that can take us there. But for all of those things to happen, things have to happen quickly. The time to market must be quick. I was talking about energy master plan with uh, Sanjeev just before starting. He is impatient. His point really is we can't wait for those things to take shape. It will be too late and too slow. The market will keep adjusting, but let's get ahead and go and implement whatever makes sense. End of the day, there must be access to technology. There's no point in developing a technology someplace where it is not accessible to everyone. All the young minds out here, you are the guys who can make the difference. If you have an idea, go and let somebody hear it out. There will be somebody who will like your idea and put money in it. You can make the world a better place for you to live in and for your kids. Thank you.